We are talking about salt in our diet today. What happens when we consume too much salt and how can we reduce it in our diet? And why should we do that? Hello and welcome to Science in 5. I'm Vismita Gupta Smith. We are talking to Dr. Francesco Branca today. Welcome, Francesco. Francesco, WHO's latest report is urging everyone to reduce salt in our diet. Please explain to us what happens when we consume too much salt. Consuming too much salt is leading to increased blood pressure and to increase risk of death for heart disease and stroke. Too much salt is the most important diet risk factor for the global burden of disease. We have one adult in four uh, that, that has a high blood pressure and we have two million people dying every year as a result of consuming too much salt. Francesco, how do we know if we are consuming too much salt? Most of us are consuming uh, too much salt. The WHO recommends to consume not more than five grams of salt every day, which is roughly half of uh, what uh, on average people consume in the world. You can get salt from what you add to foods at home, or you can get uh, salt from the manufactured products. In many high-income countries, uh, the largest amount of salt comes from manufactured food. About 80% comes from manufactured food, such as uh, bread, cheeses, preserved meat, but also high salt snacks and food consumed out of home. Uh, normally the same preparation that we consume at home is less salt than the one that is produced uh, uh, in a restaurant, uh, for example. Just to give you an example, if you take an average bag of chips of 150 grams, that uh, only that uh, bag of chips contains half of the salt we're supposed to consume every day. In lower income countries, sodium or salt come, comes mainly from what is added uh, during the home preparation and uh, during the preparation of preserves. Uh, and uh, you know it comes from condiments uh, uh, or other sources that are added to the food. Francesco, let's talk about how we can reduce our salt intake. You can progressively reduce salt in our diet and adjust your taste. It will take a few weeks, but eventually you will be able to reduce your uh, salt intake. Remember that we need to do that by one third to one half of our current intake. Uh, some of it is under our, our control and uh, we can add less salt during cooking. We can replace it with other seasoning, you know, lemon, juice, spices. Uh, we can also decide to buy less of the food that contains a high amount of salt, the processed food. We can uh, buy less frequently certain uh, options. We can also buy alternatives the same products uh, sometimes is designed to contain less salt. And if you look at the labels, it's uh, actually ex explicitly mentioned that it could be a low salt uh, uh, product. Uh, we can also altogether replace certain options with healthier ones. So, so uh, if you uh, reduce the consumption of salty snacks, you can instead consume fruit and or vegetable as a snack. And fruit and vegetable not only contains less salt, but they contain another important mineral, potassium, which is protective for our arteries and actually uh, protects us from increased blood pressure. But then it's not just our responsibility, but it's what we see in the food environment we live. And governments can nudge uh, companies to put on the market uh, 
products with less salt, but they can also offer uh, meals in public institutions such as schools that contain less salt. So uh, there could be really an overall collaboration between uh, individual consumers and uh, public health authorities to help us reduce the risk of high blood pressure by reducing salt intake. Thank you, Francesco. That was Science in 5 today. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy and stick with science.